So let's talk about the testing of spirits. Many people, and I'm going to try not to go in too deep because this is a, a subject that is dear to my heart that I have learned very clearly. So many Christians, they love to point fingers and say, Jesus said, beware false prophets. My answer to them is, yes, he did. But see, people say it. They have knowledge of what Jesus said, but they don't understand that they are not using the scripture in the right way. In fact, I wondered about this before and the Holy Spirit gave me the answer. This was about a year or so back when I was on, the, on Instagram uh, mainly. And so it's pretty simple. If the Lord says, beware false prophets, can, can a prophet who is false that the Lord is addressing, he's acknowledging there are false prophets, right? False prophets. Why didn't he just say, beware the prophets? Why did Jesus differentiate? Why did the Apostle John just now differentiate? Why did he say false? Because by default, if there are false, there are true. So why are Christians always saying, beware false prophets? This is going to hurt some people. This, is gonna, this might offend you, uh, offend your flesh. And you know, if that's the case, good. Because the truth sometimes needs to offend and expose. The truth is the light of God and exposes the darkness in us so we can get rid of it. <clears throat> All right, so this is the reason the Holy Spirit gave me. The reason a person is always saying, beware false prophets, beware false prophets, is typically their motive, their intent. The root of it is fear. They themselves are afraid of being deceived. And because they do not know how to discern a true prophet from a false prophet, it is easier for them, and there may be some pride and arrogance mixed in there, a religious spirit that is so quick to say, Jesus said false prophet, and that's their comment. And I am going to say, because I've seen it so many times in this channel and the channel before on Instagram and everything, and that's all they say. And it's like, well, what's your point? Like, sometimes I feel like responding and like, okay, and you know, what do you expect me to reply? Like, it, like, they feel good about themselves just saying that. Like, what did you accomplish by saying that? Now, if the person has trouble discerning, a person should say, I know the Bible says that the Lord says, beware false prophets. Why is this person saying this? Can you help me understand? Oh, my Lord. Doesn't, doesn't that sound like somebody that the Lord, something the Lord would love to hear? Yes. But I have almost never, almost never have had somebody with an open heart asking, how can this be? Usually the people who say it, they use sarcasm. Well, if this person said this, how come this goes against the Bible and this scripture? You wanna explain that to me? And they have this attitude. So what do I do? I don't answer them. Why? Because it'd be a waste of time if their heart is closed. If their heart is closed and I'm explaining to them, it's not going in. They have to be open in order to receive the revelation. So I'm going to focus on those who want to learn and those who want to grow because there's a lot going on in the world. We need to focus not so much, or not on the goats, but on the sheep. And even at this point, it seems like it's, it'd be wiser to focus on the lions, meaning the, the army of God, those who are warriors, as opposed to just the sheep. I'm willing to help anybody if I have an answer that the Lord has shown me in my walk. I'm willing. But you have to ask the right way with the right motive because God looks at the motive of the heart and you never know when you're going to come across somebody and the Lord reveals things to them about your heart, about the intentions behind your words and so forth. I'm not claiming to have this gift, but there have been times where the Lord tells me and it's, it's just very sad. And I just got to keep going forward. Okay, so... There's nothing wrong with telling someone, remember to test the spirits. No, that's good. You're quoting scripture. That's good. But if I ask that person, well, how do you test the spirits? Right? It's like, it's like I tell a dream and God speaks to me and I share it. And then someone says, you need to test the spirits. Okay. Well, how am I going to test the spirit? If I had the dream, quote unquote, the other day, like, am I supposed to go back in time and test the spirits? Like, it doesn't even make sense the, the way people say it. they just want to quote. And, and I don't, I don't understand that. It's like this, like a fog they're in. Yes, when we have dreams and we have visions, there are times when we 
um, how can I say? There are dreams where, where things just happen and you're not even able to. You're just watching. You're not even participating. You can't do that. Now, the best way to know that you're receiving from the Lord and from not is look at your walk. How are you living day in and day out? That doesn't mean you can't miss it, of course. But I tell you this, God and his spirit and his son is so faithful. How is God? Why would God deceive you if you are sincerely walking closer and closer, seeking to be with him every day and to know his truth and to do the right thing before his eyes? Is he going to deceive you? Is he going to let you be deceived? No. And if, if a person thinks that, then they have the wrong perspective of God. And that needs to be fixed. So, I hope to help somebody. <laughs> um, help us, Lord. We all have much to learn, even myself. Ten. So yes, false prophets are addressed, but that by default means there are true prophets. How to discern? Well, you have to have your own relationship with God. That's the answer the Holy Spirit gave me in simple words. You must have your own relationship with God to where you're praying and you're receiving answers. It doesn't have to be audible. It doesn't have to be in your dreams only. It doesn't have to be through a vision. It can be through a sensation. It can be in your spirit. It could be just a knowing. It could be you hearing something in the spirit, yes. It could be a word coming through a dream, through a vision, or just knowing that you're communicating with the Lord, communing with him as you slept. All these are various ways God speaks to us. Numbers, repetitive patterns, um, symbols, confirmations, people saying things and you, you just hear it. It has nothing to do with you, but the Lord is allowing you to hear things at an opportune times. There's so many ways that God speaks to us. So if you're open to that, then the Lord has that many more ways to get what he needs to get to you, right? And so when you get to know his voice, when someone else is speaking and you're wondering, and let's say you click on a video, you've never heard of that person. And you're like, I wonder if this, this person says, you know, it's a prophetic word. Let's see if they're right. Or let's see if it's right. Well, if that person's speaking, if you have a relationship with, with the Lord and you've built it up and you're growing to be mature, then when you hear them, you'll recognize the character of God in that person. You'll recognize the way God speaks. You'll recognize the love behind it, the redemptive purpose behind it. If you're listening to someone and all they're doing is bashing and bashing and fire and brimstone and repent and all this stuff, I'd stay away from them. I'm telling you, I mean, I was there for many, 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 many years listening to that and it didn't help me grow. It doesn't mean that God doesn't tell us to repent and it doesn't mean that he doesn't speak about hell and give warnings. He does. But God is love predominantly and everything he does is for our own good. A father. He's not a dictator. He is a loving father. And so how to tell the truth from the false? Well, you have to have that relationship with the Lord first. So many who, who can discern and don't feel bad if you feel like, oh, I'm not sure if I can really tell. There's some new people, some people present to me and it takes a while. Like I might have to listen to several, several videos. Something may feel off. Something may not feel off. I may not be 100% sure, but most of the time it's pretty easy to tell. Amen. Love. Number one thing, love. And they're speaking the truth from the word. They're able to communicate it and teach it. And as the Lord said in Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that believe. We're not talking just normal belief. We're talking believe according to the way God defines it, meaning faith in action. Faith with works to prove that one's faith is true. We've already talked about that in the previous few chapters here. <clears throat> now I see you. I bind you in Jesus' name. I cast you out. You're not welcome here. So, um, yes. So, yes. So that is the answer to that question. Some of you have had that question. How to tell the truth from the false. Grow your relationship with God. Recognize his voice, the way he speaks, the way his character is. Know your identity in him. You only find it by finding out how God is, who God is. Then you know who you are in him, because of him. Then you grow in your authority and so forth. And then you can recognize him when he's speaking through other people. Okay? And there are some people that are hearing from God, but maybe the way they deliver a word isn't the best. Well, we're all in progress. You know, I don't, get all worked up about it anymore. I used to. If I hear someone in, in you know, their dream or, the, or whatever sounds like intense and like it sounds like, oh my gosh, that's, that's got to be God. But the way they speak is like, there's not much love. They're just like, boom, 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 kind of like an attitude. I just don't listen to them anymore because I have to be led. I have to stay um, in the area where God wants me, listening to those who are helping me in that season. Perhaps one day that person, the Lord will help, you know, shave those characteristics off of them, smooth those rough edges. 
And that's between them and God. I'm not going to insult them. I'm not going to criticize them. I'm not going to talk bad about them to anyone. I'm just going to go about my way and keep walking with the Lord. So that is the mature way to respond to such things. Amen? All right. So anyway, let's move forward. We, we love that scripture, 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is greater, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world, which is the devil. Um, oh, by the way, I've been meaning to say this. 